So a very common question when it comes to PyScript is how do I use the request module with it? Uh, I've got this question on the first ever PyScript video on my channel, and since then I have still a few more people inbox me on this question. So the answer boils down to the fact that because PyScript and PyODite by extension, they run in a browser, uh, it does not have access to the socket API on your machine. So when you run requests in a Python script, that script goes ahead and access your operating system's TCP socket API. And when web browsers, when you use something through the web browser, web browsers do not provide access to this TCP socket API on your OS level. So this is a security restriction enforced by the browser. It is not a limitation on PyScript. So you will need to rewrite your application to use the browser's fetch API or work your way around using something like http.openurl, which you have seen, of course, in almost all of the PyScript videos on my channel. But today we built a summary board called Summer and we use PyScript's implementation of Fetch API to do some pretty convenient GET requests directly from the browser. Why is it called Summer? Because I'm not creative with names and Summer kind of sounds like it's short for Summary. Uh, by the way, if you're new here, I'm Samuel and this is video number seven of the PyScript series or the Build, for, build with PyScript series, where we try to build cool mini projects with Python, with PyScript and a whole bigger ecosystem all one at a time. Uh, check out the rest of the series and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of the videos in the future. Now, why do I build this project? Because sometimes when you're in an online meeting, a new acronym pops up, a concept that you're not truly familiar with, and you want a quick refresher, a quick summary to glean at. Um, I don't live in the States, so I can't say I've heard of the word USDA, for example, but suppose it gets brought up in a meeting, do I want to look ignorant or do I just want to get someone to do what it does best? So let me show you what I mean by that, right? So if I get into here and I type in something like USDA and I click on the summarize, then it would just show me what it means. And so I see that this is the United States Department of Agriculture and it's the federal executive department responsible for developing and executing federal laws related to farming, forestry, rural, economic development and food. Right, so as a side underdog, true story, but just yesterday I was having my morning conversation with Nayoko, who is my co-founder at Algorithm, and the topic of curse of dimensionality was brought up. So we were talking about this topic on machine learning and stuff and uh, this topic was brought up. Suppose I wanna just copy and paste a quick summary to him on WhatsApp. This is what I could use summer for. I could just type it in, for example, the curse of dimensionality and um, I could click on summarize. So once I've done that, look at how fast it is, right? And I, I just have this paragraph here that I could just click, click on copy to clipboard and I could open up WhatsApp and I could just paste it right in there. So today, this is what we're gonna be building, right? And actually credits to um, the, the team at Anaconda and the many collaborators behind PyScript. My personal experience is that PyScript has gone a lot faster from when we first explored this a couple of months ago, two or three months ago. So this makes PyScript extremely well suited for the task of building out this, this project, this uh, summer board project. Uh, another example, suppose I had a friend who like to talk about philosophy and we discuss names like maybe Karl Popper on uh, Nisha. Let me copy this name, right? And I paste it in here and I click summarize. So look at what happens here. It just gave me a summary of this guy and I could look at it. I could you know, maybe get myself educated on this topic. Um, age of 24, it is 69 and then University of Basel. And I can read more about that and then read that he died in 1900 and uh, after many strokes. So, you know, I could, I could get myself educated on that topic. I could also maybe look at uh, another one of my favorite, Karl Popper. So if you click summarize and sure, sure enough goes ahead and do that. Or maybe if we meet a new business acquaintance that introduced herself as being from, let's say Tosa, right? So I'm not familiar with, uh, like I said, I don't live in the state, so I'm not familiar with this. And then I punch it in, get someone to do his thing, and I can see, oh, it's from, uh, Tulsa is actually a second largest city in the state of Oklahoma and 47th most popular city in the United States, right? So especially with the lockdown and online meetings and stuff, right? When a new acronym pops up, a concept that I'm not familiar with, or if I just want a quick refresher, maybe I heard of that concept, I just want a quick refresher, I want a quick summary to glean at, um, I could just quickly, instead of looking ignorant and not being able to uh, engage in a conversation, I could just get someone to do sort of the work for me and I could just, you know, just type it in and just get summarized and I could just copy the clipboard. Uh, by the way, when we look at Karl Popper earlier, he's a phenomenal thinker. If you're not, not familiar with this name, go and look it up on Wikipedia. He has a, a very pro he has some very prominent ideas that shape how we think of the scientific method, uh, rationalism, the philosophy of science, specifically his thoughts on falsifiability, right? So that's, that's really interesting. Now, if you're ready, let's open our code editor. Let's go dive right in. Let's build out summer. Okay, so you want to have your code editor open up. Uh, I also want to thank my one of the viewers who point out about the VS Code extension. So if you go into VS Code and you search for, I um, believe it's called PyScript, <laughs> um, you would have this extension code highlighter. You can use that if you want to have like code uh, highlighting and stuff like that. You probably I already have that installed, so I, I can show you how it looks like. But I also 
uh, talk a little bit about why I did not end up using it because it, it sort of in a way it takes all the HTML and it just doesn't recognize it as a HTML file anymore. So um, yeah, that's kind of a problem. But anyway, if you want to have code highlighting as you type out your Python code in a file with the HTML extension, then you could just turn it on. For me, it's not a big deal. I don't have the hi syntax highlighting and stuff. I don't see it as a big deal. The trade-off is a little bit too, too, too large for me. So I decided to turn it off instead, um, but that's that. So anyway, let's go ahead and just create a new, open a new folder. I'm going to turn this, close this one up, click an open folder, go to your desktop. Um, this could be anywhere, right? I'm going to go into my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder and my folder is just going to be called, we're going to call it summer. So I'm going to call it summer, right? So I'm just going to say create. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm just going to call index.html. Uh, you could close out the get started. You could have just have index.html. So this is what I'm saying is that if you currently have PyScript, um, you will, it would be recognized. Make sure you can see that on my screen. If I move this up a little bit, you see that it's now recognizing this uh, as a HTML. It, it doesn't recognize it as a HTML file. So if I try to do something like H3, oh, it still works, but um, you know, you, you don't you don't see that being recognized as a HTML file, and it loses some of the functionality. But uh, the trade-off is that you do get the kind of uh, the awesome um, you know sort of the syntax highlighting if that matters a lot to you. Anyway, we're just gonna go and scuffle it out. Uh, we have the head, we have the body, we're gonna close the HTML. So these are all very standard stuff by now, which is a standard HTML um, scaffolding. Uh, the only sort of the only new thing here is the script and the link, which is really just bringing PyScript JavaScript and then the PyScript CSS file, bring them both into your file. And we saved all of that. Now, previously, when you have something like PyScript, you would have typed that out like PyScript, right? But now with the extension, you could do something like PyScript and tap, uh, hit tap, and it would just complete that. And now you could also do something like import uh, for example, you could say something, something like import pandas, and then you say, uh, let, let's just go ahead and say in, import pandas as pd, um, very common flow. And then from there, we can say pd.hit, uh, or let's say pd.readcsv first, right? Um, and then pass in a file, we call this df equals to, and then we can say df equals to hit, and equals to five, for example. And you see that there's a little bit of like those colors, but if you don't turn that off, if you just switch this back to HTML file, um, so not all of them become white again. So do you, uh, I don't know, if it matters a lot to you, you could just use the extension and you do all the syntax highlighting for you. But to me, it doesn't, to, to me, it's not It's not a big deal. I, I use, uh, sometimes I code in my own, you know, in the good old terminal and it doesn't matter to me that it doesn't have those nice fancy colors. So I'm just gonna stick with the HTML form. I just wanna point you to it. Um, so all you need to do is to just install PyScript. Um, and uh, that I think it's, I believe it's by Hardip Sync. But anyway, um, so now that we have the pie script, let's see what do we want to bring. So the usually the first thing I do almost all the time is I make sure there's a title tag, and um, I, I want to just give it a summer, right? Just call it summer, and I'm gonna find a nice a nice emoji for it. So give me a second, and I'm come uh, I'll come back once I got an emoji. So I have that. Now I'm just gonna paste that in here. So just sticking with the theme of the whole pie script series. If you have been following my videos or for all the pie script videos in this series, each of this app we use some sort of emoji in the title. We use some sort of like uh, you know make make it a little bit cute. And so uh, we, we're gonna stick to the theme of that. And then we're gonna just call this a summary bot, right? Um, I don't know. I, I don't even think that's necessary. Just you, you could. Omit that if you want to, and I want to just open up the pi env as well because it's kind of a it's something that I would need to specify. And within this, there are not a lot of things we need to bring in, but we will use the async uh, pattern. So I'm gonna bring in async io. So I'm gonna say async io like this. So we're gonna use the async await uh, pattern later as we build up our um, sort of request. Okay. And now we have the head, we have this is looking almost ready. We just have to create a new file called custom CSS if you want to, or just call it styles or CSS. And we don't have anything in there, but that's okay. Let's just go ahead and just add a, this is our custom style.css, right? So I set that in. And what do I need in here? I wanna just have a link um, style sheet and I want this to be my style.css, right? If you want to, you could also have your type equals to text CSS. Uh, uh, I feel like uh, since a lot of the styling and stuff like that is provided by Bootstrap, you could also go ahead and just add a Bootstrap. A lot of these I've covered in other kind of videos as well. If you want to like learn more about Bootstrap, I can point you to those videos where we, we spend like a whole three hours just talking about Bootstrap, the system of Bootstrap and stuff. But this is not the video for that. This is really not the video for that. So go ahead and just search it up. Um, the way you do that is you could just open up your browser and you could just type Bootstrap uh, CDN and look for like the official CDN, just click on that 
and then just uh, there is a CSS, right? You just copy that and paste that right in here. Uh, what about the J JS? Do you need the JavaScript? To me, I don't really see that I need, I don't see a need for that. But if you do see a need for that, you could also bring it in, just copy that and paste it right in here at the bottom of the body, right? To me, I, I feel like this is good enough. So we're just gonna leave it for now. And we have the title, we have the link, we have the bootstrap custom. So this looks almost ready. We could go and develop in the body, develop our sort of our body tag. So let's close the body out and make sure everything's still aligned. Um, and what do we want to do? We want to just have this open with live server. So let's do that. And now it's going to spin up. Okay, so there's nothing that's blank. Okay, completely blank. Uh, nothing that's in there. If you are familiar with Bootstrap, you know almost always we like to wrap everything in the in the container. So let's go ahead and just do that. Let's just use the admin style of coding. Just say container div container, and then what else do we want? We want to have a simple big header, and I want this I want this header to just be the, the same thing like summer. So I just want to call summer. This is my my summer bot. I'm gonna paste that right in here, and then um I want to have a simple tagline here. So the tagline is you can have it anything you want right you could call it like a simple summary bot using wikipedia for example um, but i'm gonna make it a little bit funny a little bit cute um uh, you know a little bit more uh, comedic i guess so we're not the smartest person in the room okay um doesn't mean we don't get to try or something doesn't mean we doesn't mean we can't try doesn't mean we get do, we don't get to try um what what have you right just have something here uh, a tagline you know sort of a tagline of whatever it is uh, this application you're calling it all right and then um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Actually, no, let's zoom back in. And once I put those things in the container, I now have a simple, simple, let's change, update the UI. Okay, so we have summer, we're somebody not the smartest person in the room, doesn't mean we can't try. All right, um, we can close out the other one, we don't need that anymore. We could have a simple section. Actually, we need two sections, one is for the input. So the, the input is just basically gonna contain you know, the, the, the field for the person to enter the text input. And then we're gonna have an output, which is really like the summary itself, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and create that two section. So the way I'll do that is I'll say section, and I'll say the first one, I'm just gonna call it input, and then I'm gonna say tab. And then the next one, I'm gonna say section, but this one, I want it to be summary, right? So the input is where I'm gonna put the text input in, um, I'm gonna show the text input, and then the summary is where I'm gonna actually display that, okay? and I will also want in here, I also want my, uh, you could actually build out an input field very simply, like in HTML, and you could show it like that, and you could save it, and you will definitely see a, uh, a input here. By the way, I'm using the dark theme of uh, Bootstrap, not the light theme, so if you want to use the dark theme, just go and use mine here, the, the one here, right? Or you can find all of this code in GitHub, on my GitHub anyway, you could you know, sort of, if you wanna keep it to the light one and start your own way, absolutely go and do that, right? But um, a better way to do that actually is to use PyScript's um, PyInput box because it gives us a few more things out of the box uh, to work with PyScript. So what we're gonna do is to just use the Py and we're gonna say this, we say Py input box, all right? And Py input box, we wanna give it an ID. So we're gonna just say, this is the ID. Now, whatever the person is entering into the input, we're gonna call it, we're gonna say that's the topic, right? So we just put topic in there and then we want it to have a, a placeholder. So I don't even think it works actually. Does it work? Something. Let's save it. No, the placeholder doesn't mean anything, so let's let's forget about that. Just not even have to worry about that. Just ID. <laughs> All right. And now that's the input box. So let's save that. And then we want to actually have that could be like a helper text. You could have something like a small uh, helper text here. It goes here just to explain. You know what do you use the input field for? And then finally, you want to have a button. So you could have a button and you could just, again, you could have like, you know, your class and stuff. But really, we don't want to do that. Why? Because if you do that, um, you have to code up a lot of the other things to work, make it work with PyScript. Um, so you would use JavaScript, for example, to listen to that and then you attach a listener to it. You can, I mean, it's not a lot of work, but it would use a lot of JavaScript more than necessary. So what I instead prefer to do, um, let me close up my sidebar. What I instead prefer to do is to actually use the Py button. So instead of this, I'm gonna say Pi button. Actually, some of this coding paradigm, you've seen this before. If you follow my other videos, um, especially the Gasbook app, there is a, a video, PyScript build a, build a Gasbook app using PyScript. Uh, that goes into like create, CLUD, the, C, uh, the create, the read, the update, the delete, uh, trying to build a Gasbook. So you could add a Gasbook, uh, remove a gas from a Gasbook. And that is kind of a, I use a lot of the same concepts in, in there as well. The Pi input box, the Pi button, same thing here. We also wanna give it an ID and we're gonna just call this, a, I don't know, we can call it a submit, I think and we give it a label and for the label we want to call it summarize 
and we just maybe that's i guess that's good enough i guess so why don't we close that out and now within this button if we actually do nothing the button will still appear and it would just still have summarize but it would do nothing so if i click on it nothing should happen right so how do i actually make this do something so this is where i could go ahead and actually perform my um you know, if you give a topic MRI, for example, I could click summarize and it should do something with the MRI. So let, that's that's something we're gonna come back to, uh, come back to, right? But for now, the button is sticking a little bit too close. I want to give it a bit of a, sort of a bit of a, a, a margin at the top. So I'm gonna say margin top two. So empty two. So that's from Bootstrap. So margin top two. That's that's from Bootstrap. I want to also style at this point. I want to style the section, uh, maybe the H1. I want this to be a little bit larger. So I could have this as something like. Actually, let's bring all of this diff all the way down at the bottom, containing everything, right? And I want to have this H1. I want this to be a larger one. So I could say display one, for example, and I could make it bolder, the text bolder. So say FW bolder. And then this one, I want to have class lead as well, just to give it a little bit of styling here and save that. Okay. So now I should have the summer. Okay. Now this is done. The, the sort of the UI is there. We don't, it's not fancy, but it's there, right? Now, what about summary? Now, summary initially we're gonna have uh, some some sort of some just some placeholder text here, but then later on when the when when the result is there, it's gonna fit into summary. So let's just go ahead and say something. Like enter a keyword up there, up above, uh, or, or topic maybe, or topic above, uh, in the field above, and let summer. And we also want to have that sort of that emoji. I want to paste this in here. Uh, retrieve a summary. Could maybe make it a little bit more complete. Uh, uh, retrieve a summary uh, from Wikipedia uh, in no time, right? <laughs> Just save it. Okay, a bit of a marketing language there. So enter a keyword atop in the field above and let summer retrieve a summary from Wikipedia in no time. Okay, that sounds about right, but again, it's too close. So wanna have a bit of a margin at the top. So class, and what do we want there? We wanna say margin top, uh, maybe four so they doesn't stick uh, too closely to each other. And then we wanna basically have a, uh, we know that we need a button anyway, because at the, bu the button is we, uh, the, the copy to, sort of copy to clipboard button. So I wanna have a button here, and the ID should just be something like copy, and we could give it a class to make the button a little bit prettier. We could say button, button warning. And here we wanna just say copy to clipboard, right? So say copy to clipboard. But I also want my clipboard to look sort of nice. So I want to just go and find an emoji and paste it back in here, save that. So this is how it looks like on the front end. Okay, so this is kind of very close to what we have, all right? But the feature, the functionality is not there yet. So how do we go ahead and get all of this done? Now, typically you would think that, okay, well, this is where you write your pie script and you would do your stuff. Um, or oh, actually we have that down here at the bottom. But instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something different. We're gonna try and write everything in the Python file Right, we're gonna write everything in the Python file, and we're gonna bring the Python file in here. So we're not gonna have the Python uh, Py script in here. So this is it. This is the HTML file, right? This is all you need. And then now what we need to do is to go ahead and just create a scripts folder. What I like to do is to put everything in a nice folder called scripts. You don't have to do this. You don't absolutely have to do this, but I like to do that. And I'm just gonna say new new file. And here I'm just gonna call summer.py because that's the name of my my app. Now I want to show you a few few things before we um, start to code this out. All right. So the first one I want to show you is this. If you look at the documentation, there is this uh, um, Pyodite. So the, the link, I'll put that in the description. Don't worry about that. But the, the Py API, Python API, this is the, the description to, this is a sort of the documentation to Pyodite. And if you look at it, right, let me make sure I zoom in a little bit more. And let me search for PyFetch. Okay, so there, there you go. So under http.openurl, you've seen this a lot. I've used this a lot in a lot of my PyScript projects. Uh, if you follow along up to this point, you see me using the hook open URL. I explain about that in a lot of detail, so I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the other option, which is py.http. Instead of open URL, we're gonna use the pyfetch, which is asynchronous. So open URL fetches a given URL synchronously, and then this is asynchronous. So HTTP pyfetch, it returns a fetch response. It fetch the URL and return the response. And it says that this function provides a similar API to the JavaScript fetch function, however, designed to be convenient to use from Python. And you can then, you know, listen to it. You can wait for response. You could then, um, you know, use the await uh, pattern as well. You could also do that. So when you want to use, if you want to use something like the PyFetch, you want to be aware that this whole thing have to be in the async uh, pattern. So you can't just put await in a normal define, in a normal function. Okay, so if you have something like 
let me go back to if you have a define and something right and you can't just go in here and use await for something you, it doesn't work that way you need this to be a sync right so this needs to be a synchronous function and then you could use the await keyword and then await for an, a certain um, sort of a result or uh, waiting for the result to come back to you before you do something else all right so um, how you could do this let's actually not name it something let's name it something like uh, wiki summary so just to be just to fully explain it a little bit further right so a sync this is this is gonna make it an async function and within this we could now use the await we could say do something and then await for something else all right so this is what we're gonna be using we're gonna take advantage of that and we're gonna try and ping uh, a certain API get the result back and then uh, use that to populate our front end all right uh, which API are we gonna use so I found a cool API that I will share with you. This is the Wikipedia Wikimedia REST API. And it's there are a few things you need to be aware of. For example, you don't want a client to actually make more than 200 requests per second to this API. So you also want to pass in a unique uh, user agent if you can. So there's those are things that you could help a server to con contact you quickly. Um, there is also a couple of other things you could read about like title, like HTML. There are you know a lot of things you could ping for you could also get like a pdf get a page as a pdf so on and so forth now what we want to do is we want to look at a summary so page summary slash title this is what i want all right so i'm going to actually use that and i'm going to await for a response and then if the response is good then i'm going to go ahead and do something how do i code all of that out right so let me close my sidebar again let's go ahead and bring in pyfetch because that's the sort of that's the one that we want to be using right so this is the one we want to be using pyfetch so where did this come from if you look at it it says pi Pyodite HTTP PyFetch. So this gives you a sense of like how do you want to import that. They give you a sense of how to import that, right? So when I say from Pyodite dot HTTP import PyFetch, and again I'm just reading the docs and just copying that in here, right? And then it says that you could use it the same way you would use the JavaScript uh, fetch function. Now I'm quite familiar with JavaScript, so I I know intuitively what it means here. But uh, what I mean by that is you could do something like you could say PyFetch, right? And then you pass in URL and the URL would just be, let's copy of that. Um, that's the basically summary. So let's take this and it says it require a title. Um, there are also optional, you can pass in whether or not redirect or whether or not that's accept language. Uh, I, I don't even think we need to worry about that. We just need to have this uh, sort of this, this uh, uh, slug here, this, this URL uh, structure here, right? So I know that this is gonna be something that follows the api slash api slash rest v1 right so let's just go ahead and type all of that out so https right en dot wikipedia dot org slash okay now it's, this is api slash rest underscore v1 so we're using the version one of that so let's just put that in as well api slash what do you have rest underscore v1 all right and then now let's go and take a look at what it wants us to do here we it wants the page summary so you need to put, first put the page then the summary then this is the title so this is where we want to uh, fill that in that's why we use the f string here this allows us to parameterize that and we could then for example take a slug and then here we could say take the slug and fill the slug just like that right um this is the url structure we're just following the documentation here nothing new and how do you import pyfetch we just read the documentation again nothing new and what we do is we want to say take the url this is the url what about method we want to have the method as a get method so when i say get that's a get request and then I want to have headers and I want to have this as this is where you could, um, you know, pass in the stuff that it wants. But uh, for me, the most important one, I think at this point, content type and you want this to be application JSON. Okay, you could save off that. Um, but this PyFetch itself is not doing anything. So you want to await for response. So you want to say something like await, right? And then you say if, let's say response and you could then re return response if you want to. I uh, don't want to forget a comma at the, at the end of the first one. So that's response. What you can also do is you can try to be a bit more defensive and you can use the try accept pattern and you can say try and then put all of this in. So if any of this fill, for example, so you could then have an accept block. Okay, can a bit more, sort of a bit more defensive and you could say accept um, return. I don't know what you want to return, right? For now, we can just re say return none and then later we can decide, you know, well, how do you improve that? In fact, I want to maybe bring in um, from Pyodite. import js exception because i know that this is if there is going to be an exception i expect that to be from on a javascript level so i want to say accept js exception so if this is a 
you could then print an error or you could say something like console log um in this case you just say print and say print like okay there is something you know maybe try to reconstruct the response try to make sure that uh you pass in the right headers whatever right and then once you have this you could say you could do a check here because you're waiting for this so response this has to be executed first and then you can say if the response is okay how do you say that you say if response dot okay then do something now this something could be anything you could say something like return and you could return something else you could also just get the data you could say data equals to await now again you said await because you want this to execute the uh, be executed first you don't want it to be done synchronously and then you say return data right you could also do something like that um so this is kind of uh i mean there are if you don't want to be so defensive you could just simplify a lot of this but i like to just uh, do it this way and then i could do something like uh saying define wiki summary okay that's good this is all good now i could then create another sort of outer function to say that try and ping the wiki summary if it works then you know uh, return something in html all right so let me show you what i mean by that if i set async um define and i want to say let's say get the summary okay i want to say get summary slug and here i want to say summary now because this is a sync function i get to use await as well and i want to say await wiki summary and call slug so this is going to go ahead and kick off this function and then all of this is going to succeed if all of this succeed then it's going to come back to summary then i could do a very quick check again i could say something like if summary is none return none um return none is generally not a good idea usually you want to have something better so later we're going to fix that but now i just want to make sure everything is working first so now i could say something like print or i could say something like return um sort of summary right okay something like this and then now i have two i have the wiki summary after get summary now i can go back into my index.html and i could actually bring this script in so the way i would do that is i could go into py env and i could define something like path and here i could put the path to my script and here this belongs to the scripts folder and then summer.py so what am i going to do i'm going to say scripts and summer.py all right just like how you would expect that and now this we could import we could say something like from summer import get his get summary i believe it's called get summary let me make sure it's called get summary it is indeed so let's say get summary and now let me save all of that let me go back in here and make sure everything is still working all right that's cool um now I could, because I'm using all of this in async IO pattern, so I want to import that first. So async IO. And async IO is imported already in the environment. It's declared as an environment dependency, so that's okay. And then now I want to say something like, actually bring this in. I want to say something like from Pyodite, import create proxy. So create proxy allows me to then say, use a decorator called create proxy. And this decorator allow me to then set up another async and say, on click do something and here i like to call this evt just mean event and i said when you click on this button what should happen here all right so all of this is here to say that if i click on the button i want to get summary to run with certain values so what is that value the value is whatever i specify in the topic so i could say something like url and that could just be document dot get element by id and what is the id the id is topic if you don't name it topic you want to change this but I name it topic, so I'm going to say topic. And then I want the value of that because I don't want to take this element. There's no point taking the element. I want the value of that HTML element. So I'm going to say URL. And uh, from there, I could just wait for a result, right? So I said result equals to await. And the reason I can use await is because I bring in the import SIO. If you forget this line, for example, omit this line, then this will not work. I'll show you that um, very quickly. But you can now say get summary and you can pass in the URL. And now you could then say if this all works you could just i don't know print result um, but this doesn't make sense because this is in pi button so what you could do is you can say something like you could do another doc document dot get element by id and you could get by now this time you don't want it to be topic anymore you want it to be this id summary and then you can say take that and then for the text value assign that to result you can do you can do it like that but this is a little bit ugly because in PyScript, there is a, a convenient function that allows you to achieve the same result here, and it's PyScript.write. So PyScript.write is a little bit cleaner. It says pass in an ID. So this is where I want to overwrite, right? I want to write the results of the results into summary. So I want to say summary and write the result in there. 
So let me save all of that and let's go back to the HTML and see what happened. Okay, so it's gonna rebuild all of this and everything still works. Cool, so let's go ahead and just type MRI in here. Let's say summarize, all right? So we get all of this JSON. Now, if you look at all of this JSON, they returns a lot of results. We don't need all the results. We actually really only care about the last one here, which is under the key of extract underscore HTML. If I zoom in a bit more, you'll see this, right? So this key is called extract HTML. This is actually what we want, not the rest of those things, right? The, the, the rest are cool. You have the image, you have the title, you have the revision. All of these are cool, but really what matters to us, um, at least in the context of summer, what really matters to summer is this last part, the extract underscore HTML. So what do we want to do with that? So what we can do is to go back to summer.py uh, and we could just extract specifically that area. So for example, you could do something like, um, if this is none, we could say return and we could say return because I want to have a multi-line. So I could just have three quotation marks here and I want to just say something like h1. I want to say no results found. Okay, so you could close that tag and say something like, Wikipedia doesn't have that entry, for example, doesn't have an entry for, okay, so this is a F string, so we could also use that slug directly. And the reason is we can do that is because there's an F string up here. So you could also say something like either that or summer is confused. Okay, you could say if there's no result, you could just return that. Otherwise, now we're going to copy all of this and we're going to say otherwise construct an output screen. And so let's construct that. And I actually want this to be the summary, take the title and then the P I want to take the extract HTML, which is exactly what you see up there, right? So we're going to take this. Kind of like that. And then now that you don't want to return summary anymore, you want to return the output. So you want to return output. Okay. I guess all of this is going to save. And now we can go ahead and just write MRI again. Let's click on summarize again. And let's see. Okay. Now it's working because there's the H1 and then there's this, right? So everything is still there. And let's try another text. Let's go ahead and just type um, NATO, right? Let's summarize that. And it's also working. Great. What about Tosa that we tried earlier? Okay, Tulsa is still working. So I guess everything is still good. So let's try Indonesia, summarize. Okay, it's still working. All right, cool. So all of this is still working and we already have all our script here and our index HTML is looking really good as well. So the only one last thing left to do is to fix the copy to clipboard because right now the copy to clipboard is not really working. So I couldn't really just copy this and paste it somewhere. It just wouldn't work. It just, there's nothing in here. There's not not the not the right thing that, that, that is being copied. So how do we um, add that feature? So this is not something you could do easily in Python or PyScript. So what we're gonna do is to add a bit of JavaScript, uh, sprinkle a bit of JavaScript into it, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead now and go back to my index.html. So at the very end of all of this, uh, before the closing body tag, I wanna add a JavaScript uh, here. So I wanna say script, not Java, not Python, not PyScript, okay? Just JavaScript, normal Python, uh, normal JavaScript. And I want to say that when you first log into this app, so if I, when I first get into this app, I want to first focus on the topic of in, input box. So you could do something like document dot get element by ID and I'm going to call it topic. And I want to say, just take that and just focus. Okay. Save that. So if somebody log into that, they could click on tab and just write into it. Right. Okay. That's cool. Um, and then next thing I want to do is I also want to be able to create a function that can be caught somewhere when somebody clicks on the button, right? So I want to say first say this function should be called a copy summary. Okay. And whenever somebody click on that, I want to take the content that is in here in the ID of summary. So I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to say let summary text equals to document dot get element by ID. And uh, that's called the summary. So let's do that. And I want it to be inner text. Okay. So this is the inner text. I don't want a whole HTML because I don't want to copy HTML. I want to copy text so that I can paste it into WhatsApp really, really quickly. So if somebody search for a concept, I could type it in there, copy just the text and paste it into uh, WhatsApp. So there's no reason for me to want to have the HTML. 
All right. And then the next thing I want to do, this is where I would use the JavaScript um, and, and also use the DOM, the sort of the browser API here. So the browser API that I'm going to be using is called navigator dot uh, clipboard dot write text. So that is what writes into onto your clipboard. So what do you want to write here? I want to write the summary text. So let me copy summary text and paste it into write text. And then I want to say if that is successful, then do the next thing. So again, it's an async function. This whole this whole thing that we're doing here is all async, um, you know, in an asynchronous uh, fashion. And then you could optionally have something like console.log and say successful, copy to keep clipboard, um, you know, copy to clipboard. And then um, otherwise, you know, do something else, right? You could, you could, you know, if, if this is not successful, do something else. So for example, you could add a function here to say if this is an error. You could also use the try and catch, that's also okay. And you can say console.log and say um, uh, could not copy text, right? And now, okay, this is just a function. You haven't really called a function. This is just defining a function. You still need to call it. How do you call it? So you could say something like let copy button and you can say dot document. Again, here you could use the dot get, get element by ID. So again, you're trying to get just that right ID. So what are you trying to get? You're trying to get the button. What, what do you name it? You name it button ID equals to copy. So let's put in copy here. And what do we want with this button? We want to bind that. So when I say copy button, so this is going to refer to this particular button. We want to say take that and add event listener. So listen to certain event. What event should you be listening to? Click. You want to listen to a click event. And if the person actually click on that button, what should happen? The copy summary should happen. So copy summary should happen. So just do that and save that. Okay. Let's go ahead now. Let's try all of this again. MRI. Um, actually try something else. Let's try Las Vegas. And we say summarize. Okay. So Las Vegas, often known simply as Vegas, is the 26th most popular city. I'm gonna copy all of this to clipboard. And I wanna see if I can paste it right here. And there we go. We managed to paste all of the text in here. That's awesome. And let's go ahead and do another one. Let's call it um, Curse of Dimensionality. So this is exactly what um, you know what we wanted to do yesterday, right? So search for that. Okay, copy all of that to clipboard, paste that in. There you go, Curse of Dimensionality. Okay, and I think that's that's kind of it. That's all of the features here. That's all of the, the main features in, in here. Just as a sort of a, before I deploy this, I'm gonna deploy this really quickly now. But before I do that, right in the container as well, I wanna have a horizontal line. I wanna close the horizontal line. And I wanna have a simple footer. And within the footer, I just wanna say something like part of my, and I could have a class equals to footer. And I wanna say part of my, and I'm gonna link it to my whole PyScript YouTube um, playlist. So anyone could check out, anyone who land on this demo, they could find out more um, in here. And I could say part of my, build with PyScript series on YouTube. I could also have like something like source code for this app. Is available on my GitHub. Okay. And again, I want to have a, a. This is, I remember this. So I'm just going to be github.com, only phantom. And I don't know what I'm going to call it, but I'm going to probably name it after summer. So I'm going to just put it there. And all of this needs to open in a new tab. So I'm going to say target equals to underscore blank. That's just going to make it open in a new tab. And I'm going to just put my handle in here. And I'm going to save off this. Okay, um, a few other things is to just change the style and to make things look a little bit better. So for example, I could say take the submit uh, container and make it, uh, oh, before we touch the CSS even, I want to make sure that the, the whole helper text goes here, part is gone. Okay, so that's going to be where we replace it with. I'm going to say, take this and I say, need ideas. How about one of this? And then I could give some suggestion. We use MRI a lot, so I'm going to have that in there. Uh, I think in the demo earlier at the beginning of the video, I said you, I have USDA. I don't know what that means, but you know, uh, you could learn that. So I put that in there as well. Um, I guess you could also have something like NATO and Nisha. Uh, maybe the Paris Agreement, something that uh, comes up fairly often in, on TV and you're like, oh, what does that mean? You know, you could search for that. I want to maybe start off this uh, properly. So instead of actually having this called small, I want to use the bootstrap classes. And here I'm going to say this is actually going to be class and form text. 
and I want to make them a little bit more muted, meaning just give the color a little bit grayish instead of the whole thing. All right, that's good. And I want to move the summarize to the new sort of a next button. So the way you could do that is you move into the custom CSS. So this is where you have your style.css, right? So if you click on style.css, it should open up, up that up, control click. And then now we could style that. So we could make the button instead of inline, instead of inline, we could say display as block. So that is going to force it into a new line, right? Like this. And the button itself is just blue. It's just really not, not really that fancy, not good looking. We want to give it some, some sort of color here. So we want to just say summit uh, dash container. And within it, the, the descendant, um, the button descendant, it should give it a color. We want to give it a color that looks uh, a bit summerish. So you could search for like summer color. That's what I did. I searched for summer color, find a few good colors to, to use and click on the first one and click on a color that you like, right? So for me, I just found this color. So I'm just going to use that and I'm going to paste it in. And then I want to say that uh, when this is hover over, this is hover over, I want to do something else. I want to say take a slightly different color. Again, find it from a color um, within this color palette and just copy one of them that you like. Okay, I'm going to use DC4730. Um, I want to do the same, I think, for... I want to create a class, basically. I want to create a class called Summer and I want to change this for all my links as well and i want the colors to be the same thing as the one up here so i'm just gonna copy that okay nothing should happen because i did not give anything i did not give the i did not apply the class to anything yet so the a should change but the summer class itself is not applied so let's go and fix that as well so bring off this in there and then now we just go back in here and we have to add the summer class wherever we want so for example you could go and search for your h1 tag and you could just give it summer at the bottom uh, at the end right like this. I guess the last is the change up the footer, I guess. Uh, so that's the class of footer. Let's style the footer a little bit. I want to push it all the way to the bottom because otherwise, if I look at this right now, so this is not flush all the way to the bottom. How do I change that to flush all the way to the bottom? So I could do a absolute, right? So because say footer and position should just be absolute. And how many pixels from the bottom? I want zero pixels from the bottom, meaning it should go all the way to the bottom. So bottom zero. So that should go all the way to the bottom. I don't want the width to be 100%. Take the full width, right? And you could also give it a height if you want to. Um, how large is the, sort of how, how tall is that? But for me, I think this is kind of good enough. Um, wait, the links, I forgot about the hover. That's why. Okay, let's do that. Now if I hover over, okay, now it's looking good. Zoom out a little bit. Let's try, let's try Paris Agreement. And let's summarize. And we could copy to clipboard. If we paste all the way at the bottom, you should see, okay, what looks correct. So there, there we have it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy all of this and speed up the video a little bit. And to deploy it, all you need to do is to go into settings, go into pages, and then search for the main branch, the branch where we deployed, and then click on save, all right? So I'm just gonna say main branch. So every time I push it to the main branch, it's gonna just appear. I'm just gonna copy all of this, because then I could go into summer, and whoops, and I could just add a link to it, like this. Um, save changes, and there you go. So again, everything else is going to be on the GitHub. If you want to find, if you want to follow along the code, if it's a little bit too fast for you, feel free to pause the video anywhere you need to and uh, just go ahead and build up your own uh, summer board. And let's make sure that all of this is working. Give it about one to two minutes usually. And there we have our summer board. If you like what you're building here, there are, I have a lot of other videos um, on PyScript, on building tools with PyScript. A lot of my videos are very practical. They're just about building stuff, using things that you learn and building something out and launching it. So check out the whole PyScript series. There's a lot of like build, um, you know, build app stuff of uh, coding. If you like to just learn by building actual projects, building actual apps, then you absolutely love the, the, the playlist that uh, I just created for you.
If you find a lot of value in this style of learning, then consider subscribing to my channel. I do a lot more of this and I publish something, I publish a video maybe once every, once a, once a week, maybe once every four or five days. So it's not too frequent. It's not going to spam you or anything like that. All right. So thank you for that. Thank you for the time. I'm going to uh, catch you in the next video. Bye.